one of the perks of getting to work from home is that I get to cook for myself a little more often. And uh, as I promised all of you, uh, I am going to be sharing a lot of these recipes and tips a little bit more through the new revamped Wanderlust newsletter starting this April. And I wanted to start off with a healthy ingredient and show you how you can use it a few different ways, kind of inspired by my upcoming travels. So uh, today I wanted to focus on um, April's star food of the month, and that's the sweet potato. Um, it is more um, easily adapted to many recipes, just like a regular potato, and I don't just mean sweet potato fries. So I wanted to show you a couple of quick ways that you can make a quick lunch for yourself. Um, specifically uh, the sweet potato baked skins. Now, uh, you've all had potato skins at bars or restaurants over the years, um, and yes, they can be laden with just about anything that's not good for you, um, but every once in a while you deserve to have something a little decadent, and by just switching out the regular potato for a sweet potato, it makes it that much um, easier to consume the entire thing. So here's how we started. I just grabbed a regular sweet potato, gave it a bit of a scrub underneath the um, uh, some running water, and took off any other little brown bits that I didn't want to be eating on the skin afterwards. So um, I'm going to prick this just with a little paring knife, three to four places on each side. And this is where your microwave comes in handy. I am not a big fan of cooking in the microwave. Um, essentially, aside from reheating things uh, like leftovers, I tend to use it for melting chocolate and for, of course, cooking potatoes. Now, I've got it set for 555 only because my OCD tendencies tell me to keep pressing fives is easier than just 500. Zero, zero. Um, but basically, five minutes at a time, um, after the five minutes are up, you're going to turn the sweet potato over, put it on for another five minutes, and hopefully it will um, be just about cooked for one sweet potato. That's a standard size for one person. Um, if you're cooking more than one, just make sure that they're spaced out quite a bit. Try to choose sweet potatoes that are similar in size so that you don't always end up with uh, some cooked way before the others do. While your sweet potato is cooking in the uh, uh, microwave, um, you can do two things at that time. Uh, preheat your oven. I like it at 400 degrees. Sweet potato will already be cooked, so there's no real need to uh, cook it long and slow. Uh, so um, like most bar food, uh, hot and fast is usually better. Um, and also you can start going through your pantry or your fridge. Uh, great time to use up leftovers, by the way. And uh, assemble things that you want to stuff into your potato skin. So um, I was kind of trying to convince myself that every day I need to, actually not even just every day, every meal I want to add in something green. Uh, so kale, of course, is the hot thing right now. And um, I can easily add it in uh, raw at any point. Um, I like it cooked. Um, I like it pureed in things. So uh, it's kind of a go-to. So I usually just grab one of the strands and I can actually just pull some of the leaves off. And yes, these were pre-rinsed. I do that as soon as I get back from the grocery store. So just little tiny bite-sized pieces. Now I didn't want to do plain old mozzarella, so I um, opted for some Spanish manchego, uh, just because I happen to have it from one of my last um, uh, Spanish wine classes. Um, I also, of course, had some crispy bacon ready to go. Uh, that's not so good for me, but I figure the kale's making up for it, so it's not so bad. And then, because um, I'm feeling a little caliente, um, I know I'm going to be heading to Mexico uh, in a few weeks. So um, I'm kind of craving Mexican flavors. I have some black beans um, that are canned and already cooked that were left over in the fridge. Um, I found some um, great salsa that I want to use up, and of course, uh, some old cheddar cheese. So. Um, I mentioned that I was going to talk about two different um, appetizers you can use sweet potatoes for, and the other one is quesadillas. Um, I'll show you what I do with uh, the same sweet potatoes uh, so that you can have another great sweet potato themed lunch uh, the next day. 
Okay, my oven is just about preheated, so I'm just going to finish assembling the sweet potato. Um, after the five minute mark, just as I thought, it's actually uh, nice and soft all the way through. You just have to give it a bit of a squeeze. Um, if your hands are not used to touching things that are very hot, um, if you want to hold off for a little bit, it's understandable. Just let it sit for maybe about five minutes until it's cool enough to handle it. Um, again, taking out a sharp knife, I'm going to cut the sweet potato in half, lengthwise, so I end up with two of taps. Woo, see that steam? Now, um, I basically want to keep the potato intact in its shape, but removing a lot of the, um, the interior of it. So I'm probably going to leave about a half inch gap around the ends just so that there's something sturdy enough to hold the sweet potato's shape after it's filled. Now I kind of made just some rough cuts on the side. I'm going to take a small spoon and I'm going to scoop out the insides and put it into a container. Now if you remember a few minutes ago I was saying that Sweet potato quesadillas are going to be my next little treat. So I'll make those for lunch tomorrow. And again, using up things that I have in my fridge. I'll probably still have some black beans left, and of course I'll have different kinds of cheeses because I'm a bit of a cheese nut. Um, I'll have different kinds of salsas. I think there's even a tomatillo salsa in there. Um, between that and sour cream, it's going to be one heck of a quesadilla. Uh, for that recipe, though, uh, you'll have to check out the newsletter. So now I've put in, that's basically nice and cooked and easy to mash sweet potato, so it's going to be perfect for that kind of a filling. Um, you can actually use it for just about anything else besides just quesadillas. Um, the, anything that you can normally stuff. Uh, you would also um, make a great colorful addition to a homemade hummus. So maybe some canned chickpeas, and along with the usual ingredients uh, for your favorite hummus recipe, you can throw in some of that mashed sweet potato. Um, adds a little, a little bit of color to it, that with some olive oil and some pita on the side, it's fantastic. Um, so now we're going to fill these things. I'm going to transfer them onto my very well-loved and used silk hat mat, um, and my very well-loved cookie sheets. And of course I'm going to fill these two things now. So I'm going to put a little bit of cheese on the bottom, so some of my manchango is going on one of them. And I'll put some of my cheddar on the other. And then I'm going to put some of that kale that I tore up. And don't be afraid to overfill these things because, of course, as things cook, it's going to sink a little bit. So I'm putting in some of my kale, getting as much in as I can so I can feel better about all the cheese that I'm adding. Um, I'm going to add some of those black beans now to the other one. Um, because I'm adding the beans, I'm not necessarily going to add more kale to that one. Um, I'm planning to serve um, the sweet potato. Well, you know what? Let's just add the salsa right now. Um, truly Mexican style. This one's got some corn in it too, so that's just upping the ante or upping the flavor a little bit. Um, okay, so now I'm going to go back, uh, add some bacon on top of that kale that I had finished for that one, and top it with more cheese. Now, as much as I love the burnt cheese that sticks to the top of the silk hat mat, I don't want to waste too much, so I want it on there. And the same thing with the cheddar on the other one. Salt and pepper. Um, Actually, because this manchango is pretty salty and I have bacon on there, um, and I am trying to do a little healthier, I'm going to skip my salt. I will give it a little bit of black, black pepper, which is ahead of time. And now that the oven is pretty much preheated to 400, I can go ahead and pop it. And I'll probably bake that for about 15, 20 minutes. If you're concerned about letting it overcook and you have other things to do in the afternoon, feel free to uh, set your timer. Actually, with the size of the sweet potatoes, I really only needed um, my about 10 minutes tops just to make sure that everything was melted, that kale has been sort of um, cooked down a little bit. Um, but if you want it a little browner, go ahead and leave it in longer. It's up to you. 
two different sweet potato varieties out of one little sweet potato, plus I have leftovers along with that extra grated cheese and kale and bacon and beans that I had um, still on my cutting board. I actually just wrapped it back up and put it in the fridge. Uh, not only is it going to be um, great for my quesadillas tomorrow, um, it may not even make it that far because it's a really great addition to stir scrambled eggs, I think. I think scrambled eggs might do it tomorrow. Anyhow, in the meantime, um, serving these up, uh, of course, with a little bit of sour cream, um, low fat, of course. Um, but uh, this is just a little thank you and pat on the back to myself for a uh, long morning of work. And um, I think everyone deserves to have some baked potato skins in the middle of the day. Uh, for this recipe, as well as for the sweet potato quesadillas, and then a third recipe using sweet potatoes, inspired by my upcoming trip to South Africa, you can check out the recipe for the West African vegetable stew. Uh, all three of these, of course, are going to be available only on the Wanderlust newsletter, which will be coming out on April the 1st. If you haven't signed up yet, uh, feel free to do so at stephaniepichet.ca. Um, or on our Facebook page, stephaniepichet.ca, and you'll find there's a couple of sign-up buttons that either one will take you there. And, special note, there's a contest on right now for anyone living in Ontario, here in Canada. Uh, I will come to you to host a cooking class for 10 people, along with some wine pairings. Um, and all you need to do is sign up for the newsletter. I'll be drawing that, of course, on April 1st as well, basically a celebration for um, the new relaunch of Wanderlust. Um, and as a thank you for um, all of my now sold out wine classes for the upcoming spring season. And I look forward to um, bringing you more events after my big trip overseas. So again, uh, make sure you sign up at stephaniepichet.ca and uh, have a great lunch.